Hello there. Welcome back. How are you all doing today? As we slowly vibrate into view. Yeah. I believe this will be, depending on the length of this video, the second to last episode of Dark Souls. We have a secret area to explore. We're going to explore it. But first of all, you might be asking, Ah, oh, why are you in Anor Londo? First of all, that's where the secret area is. Of course it is. You really think this area was just that one section? No, 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 no. But we've got one small thing we need to clear up before we continue. I'm pretty sure this won't break the game. Hello. How's it going, Guinevere? Gwyneve I think it's Guinevere. How's it going? Yeah, I'm great. I have journeyed far. Yep. Alright, so she's telling us we should... We should do Gwyn's job, stop the undead, listen to Framps, and um, some other bollocks like that. End of the twilight, I think she said. Yeah, I have noticed. Anor Londo is very, very orange, very twilighty. Yeah, there is there is a serious kind of case of orange glow going on here. A bit like Deus Ex, but, you know, it's not that bad. I am more of a rain guy. I'm a big fan of the rain. I think it's a wonderful, wonderful weather effect. And I'm a, I'm a bit of a shame this game doesn't really use too much of it, but anyway... Just, uh, before we go, make sure we take a nice sip of our Estus. A chew. Oh, no! I sneezed, and I threw an explosive bomb at Guinevere. Wait. Now that tarnisheth the Godmother's image, I am Gwyndolin. And thy transgression shall not go unpunished. Thou shalt perish in the twilight of Anor Londo. Ooh. So, her voice changed a little bit there. Not sure what happened, but she kind of disappeared like a, um, you know, a bit like how our young watchers down there died. Yeah, do you remember these young men who were here before? You know, the old Pikachu and Snorlax duo. Yeah, they kind of disappeared like an illusion. What's up with that? Well, we murdered someone, apparently, and now it's all gone all dark and gloomy. Just how I like it. So, have a quick little rest. And just a little, yeah. So, I've got to say, young Guinevere sounded a bit, a bit masculine there. As we sip some esters through our neck. I'm not entirely sure what happened. But, that's perfectly fine. We can just make our way out now. Safe and sound. Nothing wrong with Anor Londo. It, it normally looks like this, trust me. It's perfectly fine. I don't remember these two men being here. What's up? Do you want to do you wanna have a chat? No, of course not. These are these are actually guards or some bollocks. I don't know. I, I remember there's there's some law behind it. The one on the right looks a little bit. He's wearing the Tarkas's gear, but that's definitely not Tarkas, right? But he's wearing something that looks similar to Tarkas's gear at least. I don't quite remember. There's a bit of law behind these men. Maybe they are members of the Blades of the Dark Moon. We don't know. We're about to find out what the Blades of the Dark Moon are actually like as we just quickly poke our way through the video game. Go on. Oh, we don't actually want to die. Yeah, okay, go, come on. Give us a little give us a little swing. We're gonna just roll back for a second. Oh, no, I can't roll back there. No worries. Just let me have a little sip through my neck. Oh, yes. Alright then. Well, we can just finish this battle quite quickly if we really choose to. We can just... Uh, M2? No, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe this battle's actually slightly more difficult than I thought. Still nothing to stop me from just spamming that button. Come on, give us a little... You know what? Stop. Alright. Stop right there, criminal scum. Oh god, I got parried! I didn't know these men could parry, holy shit. Yeah, he's wearing a boulder set. Uh, if you remember at the start of the game, there were all these undead knights that were all hollowed and shit, wearing that armor. That's the boulder set, so I guess they're wearing like the boulder set and the iron... Whatever Tarkas's thing's going on, the, the iron knight or whatever the bloody hell. They're having a great time. I had no idea they could parry though. I guess, yeah look, he's wearing the boulder side sword, or he's using it at least. That must mean that he's like... Kind of similar to the Boulder Knights we saw at the start of the game, who could parry you, I guess. Didn't even think they could do that, that's pretty cool. Kind of interesting that you've got a ginormous shield alongside this side sword, but yeah. Not actually too much of an issue, it is Dark Souls AI, you can't just walk behind them and do this. I was just kind of leading them on for a little bit longer than they needed, sorry about that. Yeah, probably should have just killed you sooner, but you'll notice something interesting about them. They died the same as players do, i.e. they were they were human, they were, they were people. Those were just straight up people, like they... Just disappeared, you know, they laid onto the floor and then they, they gave me their souls. 
weakness, wings. <laughs> yeah. Whereas the young lady who he sneezed at earlier kind of just disappeared in a puff of smoke. Quite an interesting choice, because I do believe that these people are the true Desians of Anor Londo. Anor Londo is an illusion. Nothing is actually real here. This thing's been cold and dead for years. And a certain someone who we'll be meeting soon was the real person behind all of it. Ooh. Yeah. Game takes quite a visual turn here, as you see. We kind of destroyed the whole god image they've got going on. And what's this? It's our friend. Hello, friend. How's it going? No, of course, this is the Dark Moon Lady. She has some voice lines. How did you ever get this far? I shall end your suffering here and now. Yeah, so this is the Dark Moon Lady who normally guards the bonfire. She's about to try and use a buff on her sword. Actually, a very good buff. Oh, and she parries you and does a lot of damage. Okay, so, yeah. Probably shouldn't have underestimated this fight as much as I did. So let me just quickly run off and just have a little sip. Hope you don't mind. Just a quick- yeah. That's actually a really, really good buff. It's really, really popular in PvP. I think it's just Dark Moon something or other. But... This man, this man is a threat this indeed. A threat. So this was the... Master Gwendolyn. Master Gwendolyn. So we found out the real, the real head honcho here. It was not the lady up there. She didn't say, oh no, Miss Guinevere. She said Master Gwendolyn. Also look, there's a moon over there. Not the sun. Interesting thought. As we pick up the firekeeper soul, of course she was the firekeeper. Killing her actually just straight up removes the bonfire over there. You can't actually use it. So it means that for the upcoming boss fight, which I actually kind of forgot about until now, we're going to need to A, equip something with a bit better magic defense. All right, so the crest shield is probably the best shield for the upcoming battle. I don't particularly want to have to do the run over and over again, so I'm just going to go quickly... Oh, it's a person! We're finally online. Yeah, this game keeps drifting in and out of being online, so I'm going to go quickly grab the bonfire and meet you back here in a second. Alright then, so we're back. Jesus, the game... People must be happy to play. Dark Souls re... whatever. Dark Souls Remastered was announced, so that'll probably be why there's so many people playing online right now. We're not going to be doing summoning. This guy clearly is at this point in the game the same as us. You see he's holding like a double magic gear. But anyway, that's another player. We're back. I've changed up a shirt and a few things because we are going to be fighting a magic focused boss. Not that it matters really too much. I think if you just get hit you tend to die. And for this boss you can kind of counteract it a little bit by screwing around with a very certain magic that we got last time from Havel. Alright, that, that took longer than it should have. You just need to fiddle around with it. I forgot that it just keeps turning. I thought it only turns up or down. It turns out if you keep pushing in one direction, it will reach the bottom. Anyway, if you do bother doing that and realise that you can keep turning it all the way to the bottom, you will reach this nice little sanctuary where there's some player messages. I can't take this. Yes, there's no bonfire here. That actually works anyway. Maybe it works. I was under the impression that often when you die here, it just takes you back to the front bonfire, but could be wrong. Anyway... Praise the sun indeed. Ring of the first- Ring of the sun's firstborn. So, Lord Gwyn's firstborn, who inherited the sunlight, once wore this ancient ring, boosts the strength of miracles. Lord Gwyn's firstborn was a god of war, but his foolishness led to a loss of the annals and res rescinding of his deific status. Today, not even his name is known. So, this is actually- People didn't know who this was until Dark Souls 3 where they just tell you who it is. Anyway, at this point, it's not the guy we're about to meet. This is basically just Gwyn's first son. We don't know who Gwyn's first son is in this game. People like to think it's Solaire. We talked about it at the start of the game, but he's searching for the son. He might be the son. People don't know, but anyway. It was a god of war whose name was lost to the annals, i.e. you know how they're storing everything and something like that. It's history. He screwed up dearly and was lost to history, and Lord Gwyn basically pretended he didn't exist. Anyway, I don't think that bonfire actually works. I'm pretty sure it doesn't work anyway. But yeah, weakness close range battle. We're about to have a chat with a very, very strange, very strange boss indeed. So, let me just quickly give us a small buff. Like so. Master ahead, yeah. Let's traverse the white light. Heretic. First thou offended the godmother, and now thou seek fit to trample upon the tomb of the great lord. I am the 
dark sun, Gwyndolin. Let the atonement for thy felonies commence. That's right, we're fighting the infinite staircase in Super Mario 64. I've also forgotten how to fight this boss. He has some specific attacks. There's a multi-attack that you can just hide behind the pillar to dodge, and then there's a super large attack that just doesn't seem to work a lot of the time. The multi-attack, yeah, you need to hide like this, and then you need to kind of roll through it when you can, and the whole point is that you're meant to be trying to catch up to him. And once you catch up to him, you just smash him in the face. He's a very weak boss in terms of- Oh shit, I forgot- I completely forgot he did that! Holy shit. Yeah, he just turns up and bows you a bunch of times. Holy shit. In terms of HP, he's very weak. It's just catching up to him is the difficult part. I, I had no idea he was just going to one-shot me. Holy shit. Anor Londo. This isn't the... Uh... Okay. Yeah, this wasn't the bonfire we rested at, but I guess it just shoves up up by here. I think that's a bug. Like, you're meant to obviously go back to the bonfire that he spawns at. That's what makes this- that's the main thing, to be honest, that makes this boss so annoying, is the fact that the actual bonfire you rest by him doesn't work, so every single time you're gonna have to run back and forth. The fastest way to get back to him, I think, is to run all the way through there, or run all the way back to the bloody... other bonfire and warp back. There's no way just to warp over there. That's a humongous pain. Alright, I guess I'm gonna have to run all the way over here. It's the closest bonfire, I think. Some people seem to think that, like, the top of... Sin... Uh, uh... Something people think that the top... Some people seem to think that the top of Sen's Fortress is the real fastest bonfire, but I think this one's easier to get to. Yeah, here's a little picture of Smo. If we were to go into here, there would just be some, like, crystal items I don't really need, but... Oh my god, serious. Like, resting at the- oh my dear, giddy everything, holy shit, alright then, well, let's give the other bonfire a go. Yeah, this guy's still here. Hello, will you take me back? He does take you back. Yeah, there should be a cage we can just hop into and it'll take us back to the front of Sens. Wait, I completely forgot we can level up our weapon now. Like, I've just run all the way back from Anor Londo to here. I'm pretty sure we can level up our weapon to plus 15. Two of them, maybe, even. This and the... Scythe. Yeah, hello. Well, I'll be. That's a brilliant ember you've got there. For all my years in the trade, that might be the finest. How's about it? You leave that ember with me. I'm just an old smith. I'd give my left arm for a gem like that. Alright, yeah. Very large ember. Uh, thank you, mightily, for that. Now, just leave the rest to me. Andre of Astora gets the job done, you shall see. Yeah, alright then. So, how much would it be to upgrade ourselves up to a... plus... 15 scythe? This I'll have to do for now. I'm not really gonna go farming right now, so... We can't modify the other one, can we? Oh, we can give ourselves an Uchi Katana. Alright. Well, let's give ourselves a slightly better Uchi as well. That'll do us quite nicely, I think. Alright, thanks, Andrew. So we should be doing a little bit more damage with our Scythe now. That's actually a pretty, pretty useful upgrade. Let's head back, <laughs> I guess. Dark Moon Tomb. Does it actually work? Holy shit, warping to the Dark Moon Tomb actually works. Well, let's not die this time, hopefully. Let's try our best. I completely forgot he had that bloody arrow attack. Actually a humongous pain to walk back and forth. Anyway, now I've got a slightly better weapon and a bit of wits. Let's give it a second go. Yeah, I know. Alright, well, we have to just make sure that we've got our shield up, I guess, for that. And just hide at the back. Keep running as long as we can. Keep our stats up while we can. Is that a strong attack or a small attack? It's a strong one. Oh, that's not how you roll through there. All right. I think you can hit behind the pillar. No, 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 that goes through the pillar. All right. There's a reason in the back of my head I was like, there's one attack you need to actually go through. That'll be why. For his arrow attack, I think you're actually meant to just go sideways, aren't you? Yeah, like that. How did I actually die to this attack before? 
island. Now we're just going to wail on him a little bit. You can get... Yeah, you can get nearly half of his HP off in a single attack. That's how weak the boss literally is. But he's a glass cannon. Like, he will murder you with his bloody arrows. I was foolish not to be running left and right. Is it also his arrows that go straight through the wall as well? I actually have no idea. And he teleports back every time you get to him. I'm pretty sure you can hit him during his animation, though. Oh, that was a perfect roll. That was a perfect dodge. Perfectly hiding behind a wall. And then he teleports back. Alright, well, you know what? If he's going to keep teleporting. This wall, I think... I think it either technically is infinite or it's actually not. Like, I think if you can just reach the end... I don't know what happens. I think someone's probably tried it. Yeah, that thing's actually... That thing's just meant to be there to stop you getting a little bit closer, isn't it? Let's just let's just run through this and just give him a little swing. Just one swing's all we need. Yeah, you can hit him while he's teleporting. So if you're having a lot of difficulty and you're just like, you've got a very slow weapon and you think you can't do it, just try and give him a swing. He's surprisingly vulnerable a lot of the time. Dark Souls likes doing that where they don't actually show the actual hitboxes and they pretend they're there. It's also one of those bosses that you're likely to get right up to like one HP against then he one-shots you without you realizing it. But if you can just get in a few swings, he doesn't do anything in melee range. And he should be gone. He's got almost no health, holy shit. This should be the point in the game where you've got like a bow that actually does something. Unfortunately, I haven't been bothered to upgrade my composite bow, so there's not much I can do. Oh yeah, that's the, that's the, you look at him. He raises up. That's his thing. You'll also notice he's all snaky and shit. Oh, I hate it. Swathed in dark. An eternal curse upon thee. So yeah, that was... That was not... that. Why did I only just get that achievement? I've definitely beaten that boss before. That was strange. Oh, right, well, maybe you have to be online to get the achievement. I'm not... It's very... I've definitely... I've definitely beaten him in my last run, because I've got the bloody... Uh, the bloody soul you get from him. You can make an item. I can put what the item was, but... Anyway, once you beat him, you come all the way over here to a chest. This area, by the way, reappears in Dark Souls 3. Pretty cool. They like the bloody love everything. Anyway, here's a ginormous tomb. One of the reasons people assume that Anor Londo was originally filled with giants is that he says this area is a tomb, and inside of it is, well... This, with a single flower on top. Anyway. Yeah, I've definitely gotten the sunlight blade before. Anyway, this is what Solaire uses, I think, maybe. It's this big old praise the sun thing. Is there just nothing in there? Do you not get, like, an armor set when you normally do this? Weird. Brass Helm. Yeah, you get the armor of the lady. Yeah, I definitely remember reading through this. She tell it tells her about how she's hiding something behind her helmet, right? Brass Helm. Helm of the Dark Moon Nitus. Firekeeper of Anor Londo. After becoming undead, she visited the Dark Sun Gwendolyn at the mausoleum of the Spiral Depths. That's what this is. And became a blade of the Dark Moon. And she assumed the flame-keeping duty. She received this helm, which hides her hideous form and helps haunt hunt the guilty. So she wasn't happy becoming undead, and she thought she became hideous. So she got a nice, really, really cool helmet. I, I genuinely love the brass set. I think it looks amazing. Just look at that. It's a really nice looking helmet. It actually goes on a lot of builds, and the rest of the armor set you get. It's just a solid set in general. Sunlight Blade. Wielded by the Lord Gwyn's firstborn. This is another reason everyone thought that it was Solaire. Because Solaire uses this miracle. And it says here that the firstborn wielded this miracle. You can see why people got confused. Boosts right weapon with rays of sun. The power of sunlight, manifested as lightning, is very effective against dragons. When the eldest son was stripped of his deatific status, he left this on his father's coffin, perhaps as a final farewell. So, yeah, people... People very rightly so assume that Solaire was the firstborn. This is his thing. He loves the sun. It's his thing. So, yeah. Anyway, that wasn't nearly as difficult as I thought it was. I got him on the first try that I really... Yeah, second try. First time that I realized he had the bloody bow attack. So, not too difficult. But it's mostly just if you do die, you miss up twice on those large magic spam attacks and die. You just have to do that run again. And it's just a pain. You have to do like a 5-10 minute run every time. Anyway. We've got some souls here to make up for what we lost, and we're going to shove that straight into Endurance, of course. Anyway, let's quickly walk back to the chamber, because I believe this is the closest bonfire. I wish I could use that other miracle, by the way, but I just don't have the levels for it, or I don't have the faith, even. So actually, let's rest here, because I did level this up, fortunately. There we go. And let's also repair my stuff while I'm here. I think my armor's a little broken. There we go. Very good stuff. 
and let's head off. I don't believe you can buy chunks anywhere. I thought you have to farm either Blighttown maggots, I think, drop, or the Blighttown leeches even, I think, drop chunks, maybe. Hello! You noticed how the whole sky's gone twilight? Obviously, by the way, he's not an illusion, based on the fact he's still here. How's it going? Yeah, he doesn't really notice, apparently. Anyway, you don't sell... No, not repair. You don't sell any chunks, do you? No, just twinkling. Twinkling's his thing. But we could reinforce our Solaire weapon, I guess, if we really wanted to. I'm not gonna do that. Alright, let's also switch- you yeah, cometh soon, great. Let's switch back to the old spider shield, because I think that's slightly better. Yeah, this is one better stability. I think if we upgraded that crest shield, it would just be straight better at this point than the spider shield. But, I'm not gonna worry about that. What's this? Is this just like some souls? No, oh, that's a chunk! <laughs> great, thanks game. Thank you. I think that item up there is uh, the crossbow, by the way. Not the crossbow, sorry. I think that's the giant, enormous bow that the annual Londo archers use, and I just never picked it up. If you were wondering what that was. Here are those zero souls I got when I rolled off the cliff. That was not the best idea. Alright, here we go. So after screwing around with the lift a little bit more, we found ourselves at the bottom of the cathedral from last time. I think we visited here quickly, because this is where all of the- these boys are. Yes, these are the painting guardians. Because they guard the painting. They have a very, very good weapon, actually. Has absolute shit range, but it's very fast firing. Does a lot of damage on backstab. I think maybe the highest, or one of the highest. Not entirely sure. It's got some special stat applied to it. And also their gear looks cool. But you kind of have to sit here and farm them a while to get the items, so I'm not going to even worry about that. Have we really not been down here? Oh, maybe not in this run. Okay, well, we're just going to go over here and try not to get too many of them on us. They do like throwing daggers at you, but if we just run over here... We should just be able to bait one of them to attack us once, and then do the old swing, bash. Yeah, we've got a very good weapon right now, and they do just kind of throw stuff at you. Yeah, this is Tarkus's gear, so I guess we haven't actually been here on this run yet. I'll give it a chat in a second once I've um, not died to every item in the game, or every enemy in the game. You just get a little bit of stamina back and one swing. Very satisfying to f uh, fight all of these enemies, especially if you get all of them to run after you. Alright. Oh, holy shit. Really? Alright then, I guess we got the sword. I don't know what chance that is, but I think it's fairly low. Let's have a little read. Painting Guardian Sword. Critical 100. Oh, there you go, it does 300 bleed, that's what it is. <laughs> Actually very strong. Yeah, our Bandit's Knife, who was doing loads of bleed, also does um, 300. This thing does... Yeah, so our original knife was a B index. This sword is an A index, which means that if you level up your dex, this thing should get a lot stronger. Anyway. Curved sword of the Anor Londo painting guards. Unique, t unique shape with a flat tip. The guardians, who strike down those who dare threaten the paintings, attack in a continuous circular dancing motion, a technique passed through the generations. And yeah, quite small, has a really small range, but a wonderful... Look at this moveset. Really, really, really cool bloody item that probably most people haven't seen. I don't think I've ever actually gotten the item from a drop. So just... I just like it. <laughs> I think it's really cool. You can do like a little backflip, holy shit. So yeah, the forward attack, instead of being a thrust, is a fucking black- Jesus Christ, I, I like that, alright. Well, we're not gonna use that this run, maybe next run. <laughs> anyway, great scythe, great. There's also an item that dropped onto the banister over here, I want to quickly grab and have a little look at. Remember earlier, we smashed that uh, chandelier? And by earlier, I mean several months ago now. <laughs> Jesus. So yeah, they slice, they dice, but most importantly, they thrice. What's this? Great magic weapon. Well, that's... Yeah, that's really good. So, great magic weapon. Can we actually use this? Do we have the faith? Ah, oh, we put four more in faith, we'll be able to use this. That's a very good upgrade. It's, it's significantly more damage than magic weapon. Anyway, sorcery which improves on magic weapon. High magic augmentation for the right weapon. At Vinheim Dragon School, only magic swordsmen on special orders are allowed to learn this spell, which grants powerful augmentations to various weapons. So yeah, presumably it was this guy here who we crushed. Or he was, you know, he's already here, but we smashed them on the bloody chandelier. And yeah, maybe they were hanging on the chandelier. Maybe the painting guardians put him on the chandelier. Anyway, we also got the armor of Tarkus, which we should quickly have a little read of. Helm of Black Iron Tarkus, a knight known for his great strength. Built of a special black iron and providing strong defense, notably against fire. Yeah, that's pretty high fire defense. But so terribly heavy to be unwieldy to all but Tarkus himself. So he was a strong boy. And, well, yes. <laughs> so I agree with this theory and I think it's wonderful. Tarkus beat. He destroyed Sen's fortress. He came here on a mission and he destroyed Sen's fortress. 
d absolutely destroyed the uh, the Iron Golem, the giant thing, the boss of Sen's Fortress that he can pretty much just one shot as a phantom. We saw him earlier in the game. Yeah, came all the way to Anorlando, came into this church, and on that high up area, if you remember, we had to tiptoe through. The theory is that he just fell off and died, and that's Tarkas there. I agree with this theory because I think it's hilarious. He also, I think he smashed a pot when he landed. But yeah, the theory is that he just destroyed Sen's fortress and then <laughs> basically just fell over and died. Kind of a strange way to die. But anyway, if you'll see, there is this beautiful, humongous painting. Actually huge. Like, I don't know how tall that is. It's like the size of, like, a, I don't know, six-story building? Five-story building? It's quite large. And we picked up an item earlier which interacts with it in a strange way, if you remember. Peculiar doll. She was drawn into a cold and lonely painted world. Well, yeah. <laughs> Let's have a little examine with this strange peculiar doll in our hands. Yep. You get drawn into the painted world of Ariamis, which I think might have been the first world ever designed for the game, maybe. There was something along those lines where this was one of the earliest designed levels in the game, and they ended up putting it in as an easter egg, basically. You can get here, should you find the right items and put two and two together, you'll arrive in this really pretty area. Secret level, closed off, unique enemies, unique lore, and... Yeah, a lot of people on spikes. That is kind of a recurring theme here, is people on spikes. But, here is a bonfire that you should learn to know and love. You will come back here quite a lot. This level is very intermingled in a Dark Souls fashion, where you will unlock areas and it will unlock shortcuts. As you might see from that large door, which is not open yet, so... Grab you. Yeah, this is a wonderful area. I don't know how long it'll take us to go through it. Typically, if, like, if you die, it'll take quite a while. But, um, we've already been going on for quite a while as a result of that bloody boss fight, having to run back and forth. So... Stay in touch. This will be a nice long video. So here's the first thing of the day. Wonderful little section. You can smash that and draw that body down. I don't know if you can actually use a bow. Possibly. Do I have a bow on me? I think you can. There's a Dark Souls 3 area like this that you can use a bow. I think this one... <laughs> you can actually use a bow. That's awesome. Alright then. Call it Leads to Reggie thing. You can just get a bit of humanity. It's just a nice little video game thing. Anyway, let's have a little explore. We don't know much about the level yet. We've only just been drawn in by a strange thing. Crows as well. That's a recurring theme. Crows and hollows. If you like crows and hollows, this is the place to be. As well as PvP. We'll get an item later that enables that quite strongly. So, there's this boy here. I don't know. I might be wrong, but I think this level's also quite popular for PvP. I don't actually know if it's possible to summon here. I'm assuming it is. And I think this is where people just like to come, because at this point in the game... You'll have all the items and you'll be at a certain point that you just want to fight players and have a good time. So if you look up on the top left, you see a very strange looking crow. Yeah. We like these crow people. This level's full of them. And I think they descend upon you here. Maybe. Maybe not. Hmm. Yeah, look, watch. That's such a cool little thing. Like, windbreakery thing. So there's this giant crow with a lady's bottom appears down and just starts doing scary crow things. And if you've never been to this section, it looks really weird. These aren't anywhere else. They are strange raven abominations. Maybe they're not crows. Maybe they're ravens. But also, the death sound they make is the same as the ones from... Seath. Seath? It is Seath, right? Yeah, do you remember the big dragon? And he had those horrible woman... Tentacle monster things? They have the same death cry as these ravens. Beware of demon, yeah. I, I just like also that you can see them descend upon you, and the level's littered with them. They're everywhere. There's some over there. Just ev everywhere high point you'll get to, you'll have to fight them. And yes, they have ladies' bottoms. It's wonderful. So let's do a little bit more exploring. There's a lot to explore. It's a level full of detail. If you like little small things, small features, small touches... Forgive me. I, I definitely genuinely have something stuck in my eye. It's not very good. This level's amazing for it. And also views. I think it's one of the prettiest areas in the game. Also, I forgot about these boys. Pyromancy. This area is full of bloody bloathead boys who explode when you blow them up. 
with a fire weapon. Yeah, that thing... Does that cause toxic or bleed? I don't remember what it is, but they cause a status effect on you. That means that you don't want to be next to them when you kill them. But because we've got a long-range weapon, we should be alright. You can also throw fireballs at them, and it, like, cauterizes the wound or whatever. So it means they just straight up die instead of bleeding on you. But yeah, if you come here without the proper equipment, you will probably bleed to Not bleed. I'm pretty sure it's toxic. Also, I think you can make that jump. I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> it's very hard to do. I think it's only... Maybe recently, within the last couple of years, it's been people have realized they could make that jump. I remember this area quite well. Yeah, if you die, you'll be coming back here quite a lot. And there's an item down there I want to grab, because I think it has lore implications about this area. So if we just kill these boys and let the other fiery boys come and join us... Come on. Don't be shy. I'm pretty sure we can one-shot them with our current weapon, or nearly one-shot them. That's pretty dangerous. So yeah, what, does it, what do they give you? Toxic! They instantly toxic you. Holy shit, yeah. Toxic is way more dangerous than poison, but once you've got it on you, you might as well just rush. You've got toxic anyway, it doesn't get any worse. So just... Do I have any moss on me? I want to know. I don't think I do, do I? No, okay, so I think we're just going to take a lot of damage here to toxic. That's perfectly fine, that's expected. We've got a decent toxic resistance from our items being leveled up. Do another cut down here. Hello? Quite difficult to do, actually, on the controller. Smash that down. Goodbye. And there's some more enemies we'll be fighting down there, if you see. I believe those are a reference to Demon Souls. I think this whole area might be a Demon Souls reference. I don't know. I haven't played through it. I don't own a PlayStation. I probably will one day. But um, I'm under the impression that maybe the crows are a reference, but definitely those, like, squishy blob enemies down there are. So, let's grab this item quickly. What are you? A soul? Yeah, that's a soul. And also, the area is just like the start of the game, where there's just ambushes everywhere. They don't necessarily just throw enemies at you madly. They'll be quite clever with some of the placements. They'll show them very obviously, and then others will be not so obvious. So, I don't think you can make this jump. No, maybe not. Maybe I just did a roll. That jump should definitely be doable, though. But anyway, let's have a little sip. Oh, it's a player. Hello. Someone's enjoying their time through Dark Souls. Let's jump down here and have what I believe is an occult weapon. Ah, no, that's not the way to make the jump at all. Hello. Try humanity. Yeah. What is it down here? There's definitely... Oh, yes, the giant rats. That's it. This is the area in the game with albino rats. Only area in the game, I believe. White rats. This guy jumped down here. I believe there's a little bit of a lore behind that, but I don't entirely know what it is. Maybe just that this area is brimming with humanity, hence why there's giant rats everywhere, or whatever it happens to be. They don't really fight you. It is free humanity, though, if you want to fight them over and over again. I'm pretty sure they drop it. Could be wrong. They're a little rotten. Holy shit, yeah, I didn't realise our toxic immunity was so good. We're taking almost no damage from this. It must be because we leveled up our items, right? So yeah. Stab, 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 stab. Stab, 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 stab. And let's have a little climb. And a jump down. What are you? Here. Yeah, there's a lot of twinkling everywhere, which makes you think that there's titanite, de uh, titanite scaly boys. Someone told me what last time what they're actually called, and I keep forgetting. I think we can just drop down fine here. Not to worry. And have a little drink. Yeah. Definitely want to come here if you have a lot of HP. I think it makes it a lot easier. Like, even if you don't have a lot of toxic resistance, just all the full damage you'll be taking. Should have checked for a mimic, actually. But yeah. Oh, just gives you the Painting Guardian set. That's pretty cool. What does the Painting Guardian set tell us? Hoods worn by the Alabaster Clothed Guardians of the Paintings of Anor Londo offers substantial protection versus, versus magic. Huh. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of magic defense. I could have used that for the bloody boss fight. Maybe not. We actually managed to dodge most of the attacks, I think. I guess if you're having difficulty with Gwendolyn, you could come here and grab this before fighting him. Anyway. They have guarded the great paintings of Ariamas for ages, passing their duty down through the generations. But the reason for doing so has been lost from memory long ago. So yeah, they're doing their job to guard the, uh, the, guard the paintings over and over again. But presumably they've all hollowed or something, and they've just forgotten what they're doing. But they're just going to continue doing it anyway, because that's what they like doing. So, yeah, a little trap here. If you just climb straight up the ladder, he should appear behind you and then murder you, apparently. Holy shit. I got trapped by a rat. I was not expecting that. There you go. Like, I even saw the bloody thing coming. Did I not rest at the bonfire? I was under the impression... Maybe I only lit the bonfire, anyway. Not to worry. We will have a little quick jaunt back. I think you forgot how hollows can actually kill you. Like, they do so little damage. And then that's when they kill you. It's when they they lure you into a se false sense of security where you think it's totally fine and they're not going to do anything to you. That's when they that's when they bloody murder you, isn't it? So let's have a little run down here. 
And run down here. This is where- this is another rat room. So I thought the rats were actually friendly. I guess not. I guess these rats aren't friendly. I don't know why they weren't attacking me before. Soul of a brave warrior. That's sweet. Do quite a little bit of damage as well. Holy shit. Alright then, so I guess that's just a... It's just a room. There's nothing else in here. I guess it's just a trap room or something. I wouldn't mind using my bow to kill them. I don't really like all the toxic they give off. But... Oh, bloody hell, he's got a torch as well. I'm too close to you. Could you stay back? Thank you. Yeah, if you've got a long weapon, like if you've got like a Zavai Hander or something, you should be totally fine in this area just to run what you're used to. I hear stuff scurrying. Oh god, it's all the hollows. They're back for more. Well, you know who else is back for more? Man with Scythe. Man with Scythe is back for more. And also, I think if you've got enough HP, you can just drop down a lot of this, on a lot of these levels and just go straight down to the bottom. Give you a little Scythe to the face and attempt the jump. Oh, well, that wasn't the best idea, and I guess we made the jump, so it was fine. That's cool. We've landed in the area with the Demon Souls enemies that just appear and go globble globble. I don't want that. I want to get the bonfire first. Yeah, you can farm these guys for souls. They're actually a really, really good section. But if you're not careful, they will just maul you. Like, there's a lot of them in a row, and I think they do something pretty spooky to you. I don't remember what. But yeah, they're just these hideous blob forms of... They're just like snail creature things. I don't particularly like them. They also don't make much of a noise, I think. They just kind of sit here and stab you over and over again. Maybe it's a boss in, Do in Demon's Souls, considering there's so many of them and they're just hollows jacked on top of each other. But yeah, you can get like a good 100,000 souls or something. 10,000 souls at least. Oh, a large leather shield. I didn't know they dropped anything. Oh yeah, these, these things here. These are like magic things. Some other player did something faith related or int based and it boosts magic in this area and a spear we got both the weapons in one go that's pretty cool all right then give us a little rain a little rush let's have a little read i didn't know they actually dropped their items that's pretty cool standard spear used commonly by soldiers all right that's just a normal spear and is the leather shield just an ordinary leather shield large leather shield good choice for hunters they're lighter than metal shields but with lower physical damage reduction Interesting. Okay. So I guess those are just ordinary weapons. Um, where's the bonfire? There's a little section around here where you get trapped. I don't know if it's this one, but... Humanity? Alright, sweet. Yeah. Just a mm, pretty little area. Yeah, going down there. We're gonna have to go down there in a little bit. We also want to make ourselves human before we do, because I do believe there is a NPC we'll want to fight with a rather large hat. And I don't think you can fight him if you've done something. You hear that? I'm pretty sure there's going to be a bunch of enemies on the other side of this door. Unless this is just the starting bonfire. I think this is just the starting bonfire. Here we go. So that's, this is the gate I actually wanted to get. Do you mind? I just want to slice you. Thank you. Is this just the beginning of the spell? Yeah. Alright, sweet. So there we go. Dark Soulsy thing indeed. We arrive back at, the, back at the bonfire. And we will just quickly want to pop a little bit of humanity. Where's our double humanity? And we will... Reverse hollowing. What's wrong with my fist? It's all scrunched up. And then we will kindle. Yeah, my... I don't think my fist is meant to do that. <laughs> Alright. Game's a little glitchy. It's perfectly fine. So now we've got plus 10 esters and we have kindled the bonfire. So that's terrific. Oh, nice jump slash, man. Holy shit. We might go back and get our souls from before. I'm not really too fast, but yeah. You can literally just come back and fight these guys over and over and over again. Basically for a near infinite amount of souls. It's pretty terrific. I think the typical way to fight them is just to run in a little circle until they've used up all of their attacks. And then just to run behind and do a big sweeping move. This is what the, this is what the bloody scythe was made for. Just farming a bunch of low HP enemies over and over again. Like the rats in the... Uh, rats in the catacombs are kind of good for that, but yeah. This is why I'm not too miffed about losing souls in this game. There's sections like this that you can just rush through and just... You just get so much stuff out of it. So if this is the point in the game where you just want to upgrade, you're having a bit of difficulty on a late game boss or something, just come here and fight them over and over again, and you'll get about, yes, 7,500 souls. I think if you use the right ring, you'll get a good 10,000-ish. Anyway, the section I want to go to is over... I don't want to go through the mist yet, I think. I want to go up through this staircase and see what the actual typical way to get through here is. What are you? Despair ahead. What are you... Bunch of crows nibbling on something? Beware of lying in ambush. Yeah. Oh, that's a soul. That's a. That's not a soul you're meant to pick up, is it? It's an ambush soul. So, yeah. 
There's a lot of enemies around the corner, and one of them is an immolated boy in blue. And then they run at you with these bloody arrows. Come on, hit, give, hit me once. Give it your best shot, and I will just destroy you swiftly. And... Yep, nothing else here, really. I think the enemy there smashes something and drops that onto the floor. That's where we want to go, by the way. That's where we want to explore. So... I don't know the actual... T oh, can we just go down here? Let's just go down here and give it an explore now. I don't see why not. Is this just... This is just where we were, and then those <laughs> bloody hollows just suddenly spawn in. Holy shit, alright then. Well, I'm not going to worry about that icy boy, though. We are going to instead have a little run through here. There's another door up here I want to open. Have a little walk through. It's locked. Maybe it's locked on the other end. Try Labyrinth. Alright, so this is- you have to go through the well to get to that door. And it's a double door. Alright, well, you know what? Let's go through the mist. I don't remember what's on the other side of this. Is it the big tall tower, maybe? Yeah, this is the tall tower. So we're gonna have to climb a little bit to get to the top. It's quite difficult. Be wary of bug. Yeah. So, you have to be quite careful, because the whole section on the way up is very thin and precarious, and if you fall off, you will probably get one shot. And the game likes to push you off. So, this is a skip, by the way. There is a skip you can abuse to try ranged battle, yeah. There's a thing you can do to force this, if you can see his bum fall off the edge. This is a big dragon bum. If you remember from Lost Isolith. Oh, not Lost Dragon Bum, sorry. His bum fell off. This is a big cursed dragon, or whatever the hell he's called. And he runs at you angrily. Maybe this isn't the skip. I actually don't remember. You can fight him, though. You can fight him with a good composite bow and not have to worry about much. Wait, am I being attacked? Maybe not. Yeah. I don't remember the word from him. He's got a cool name, but anyway, you can just sit here and spam him with arrows over and over again, which I will. I don't know if he can hit us from here. He can, but barely. Alright, you know what? There's probably an area further back we can stand and spam him from. So I'll just kick here, slay this boy. He takes a modest amount of damage from our all right bone. Alright, I'll just sit here and spam over and over and over again then. And there she goes. Big old dragon. Let's be a bit of a jump scare. Like you run across the bridge thinking he's dead and then he just appears and goes oof. And no, yeah, he does leave his ass behind. I was wrong, I was wrong. Dragon scale. So yeah. Cool little hollowed dragon there. And he drops the blood shield. This weapon is amazing. This is actually a really cool shield. The blood shield spoken in the Lost Legends. The red of blood is slightly enchanted and boosts various resistances. So I think I could be wrong. But I believe that this is also a shield that has a resistance to poison on it, similar to the spider shield. So you could use this to basically be immune to a bunch of attacks. Anyway, he does leave his ass behind. It, like, tears off of his body. And you can kind of do a little easter egg, I think, to wake it up. Like, you can't attack it normally. I think maybe you can. Well, whatever it is, we're not going to have to worry about that right now. It's a skip that allows you to kind of cut through a lot of the area. So if you're going through this in a, in a subsequent run, and you don't want to do the whole thing over again, that's kind of your way through. Anyway, I want to climb to the top of this tower and have a bit of a duel with some ravens. Yep, there's one behind us. I think really what you're meant to do is just get all of them and then run to the bottom, but I'm not too worried. I think. I think I'm not too worried. Goodbye. They should die. They should also die, apparently. Not the smartest idea, maybe, but... They just tried to attack us and fell off, basically. So yeah, you can expect to die here quite a lot, if you're not careful. But I think we should have enough stability to just be able to run to the top and grab the spoils. Ah. Don't put a red sign right on top of the bloody corpse. Yeah, it's the red sign soapstone. So someone clearly just picked it up and gave it a go. A naked man with a Drake sword. <laughs> I don't really want to fight him up here. I'm pretty sure he'll kill us. But uh, yeah, that red sign basically means that you, instead of having to use red eye orbs and forcefully invade the world, you can place this on the ground and other people can just battle you. So if you want to have a fight with other people instead of helping them, use the red soap. I use the white soapstone to help them. Sorry, the one that Solaire gives you, and you use the red one to fight against them. So it's quite fun for dueling, and you will typically see those signs a lot over the area if you do play online. If you let me have a little read of it quickly, red sign soapstone, online play item, leaves invasion sign, hollows cannot use the item. So you can't just spam it. If you lose in game, you have to use humanity to use it again. 
Be summoned to another world as a dark spirit, and defeat the summoner to acquire humanity. Certain dark wraiths resist their descent into dark and, pres and persevere along the honourable path. The red, so so the red sign soapstones for them. So yeah, you use the cracked red eye orb to invade other people, and you use the red assigned soapstone to honourably take people's humanity. So people accept the duel against you. If they win, they banish you. That's an awful noise. And if you win, you get the humanity from them. So it's a very, very fun item. Definitely, like, a huge part of the game. And you kind of need to come to the secret area to get it. But to be honest, if you're willing to spec into PvP, you'll probably have known about this area. So let's just jump down. It'll probably be fine, yeah. We need to find a way back to that well, because I believe that's the next area we want to inspect. Hello, Ratty Bum. Bye, Ratty Bum. Was this where we died before? Up here? Ah, oh, here we go. Here's like a bunch of bloody souls. So let's not die to the rat this time. Maybe? Maybe the rat's not following us this time. Let's instead kill you, please. Thank you. Yeah, I guess the rat's not following us this time. That's fine. So yeah, that was the ambush. And if we climb up here, it should take us to the top of the rafters, where... Yeah, this is the other end of the area that I missed the jump to, maybe? Can I just kick you off the edge, maybe? I don't really want to get toxic. <laughs> you can. You can totally just kick them off the edge. Oh god, what's he doing? He just burp at me. That's disgusting. Can't do that. Look, just kick him off the edge. Don't even want to deal with him. <laughs> you can do that with enemies, by the way. I did it. Yeah. So you can just jump here. I missed the jump before. Holy shit. You just breathe fire at me. Alright, well, I missed the jump last time. That's alright. Uh, we just need to make our way back down to the courtyard that we were previously at. And I believe the safest way to get down, funnily enough, is to run through all of the enemies. So, let's go up here. Look for the drop down. Here it is. Hey, guy. How's it going? Drop down here. Completely miss the drop that saves you a bit of HP. That's totally fine. Maybe it's just these rats that are completely fine. Nope, never mind. They're only fine for a little bit. Maybe they're, like, blind or something. I don't know the lore implications of that. Oh, you know what it is? I took the wrong jump last time. No, that's not it. That's not it. That's not it. I keep doing the wrong jump. Where, which jump is it? Is it this one? I'm gonna try this jump and then go down, maybe. Maybe that'll take us where we want to go. You know what, I give up. The fastest way back is the way you'd intend it to be. Let us use a little bit more endurance. Always useful. Getting that green bar up pretty high to the point where I'm pretty sure we can just spam, like, a million double-handed swings without ever having to worry about it. Do you mind? I was testing my bloody endurance. It's also going to mean that we might be able to use other rings just to mix things up a little bit anyway. These boys are back, and this is the area we want to be in. Be wary of Dark Wraith. So, are we still human? We are still human, so I think we can actually get the summoning thing going on here. We do a little walking around. And you also listen, by the way, the music will get really dark. Oh, that was the wrong time. Quite a lot of hollows here today. Holy shit. They're all coming in on the phone. You're welcome to join if you want. Just kick you in the face and give the old the old slice and dice. So yeah, if we have a little walk around. First of all, you have a look. A lot of bodies on spikes. And if we go all the way to the edge and listen to the music for a moment. Do you mind? Dark Spirit King Jeremiah has invaded. I'm pretty sure that's the one we want. That looks like him. So yeah, Dark Soul of a Proud Knight. Soul of a Proud Knight. We're about to meet King Jeremiah. A pyromancy boy with a large old thing on his head. Looks a bit like a wooden spoon, maybe. But he uses a bunch of dark chaos pyromancies and shit. He's fucking awesome. Look at him. Look at him. He's using a bunch of bloody... Pyromancies that quite lag at everyone. All of those sisters of the Abyss love. And he will also sometimes drop his hat, I think. Which is the main reason you come here, anyway. So yeah, he's quite dangerous. Those Pyromancies do a lot of damage. But, as long as you don't fall off the cliff, you should be fine. You can't just run at him and do this, by the way. Completely glow through his attacks. Not too difficult of an NPC invasion, obviously, but... Yeah, he drops a bunch of items. Which we will have a little read. Retrieve remaining power of dark spirit. Alright. Pick up item. The notched whip. Does he not drop his hat? I think there's a thing you need to do to drop his hat. I forget what it is. Maybe it's you need to... No, I'm th thinking you have to... if you trade it to the crows, you get another ring of favour and protection. 
but I forget how you actually get it set. Maybe you need to reload the area. Imminent tight spot. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Alright, what's the notched whip anyway? Notched whip. Sh whip with sharp spikes. Only slightly effective against armor and tough scales, but quite formidable against enemies with exposed skin. Causes heavy bleeding. So yeah, 300 on a whip. Never used whips in this game. They're really, really weird, but it looks cool as hell. It's got a weird moveset, and it's makes it just causes a shitload of bleed, basically. It's a cool weapon. Not something I'd be used personally, but if you're into the old the old whip area of the world, that's probably one you want to be going with. I'm going to reload the area. I think there's a thing you can do to cause his items to appear, and I forget what it is. Oh, <laughs> everyone just ragdolling all of a sudden. Holy shit. Does he not drop his items in one of these cages or something? I was under the impression that's what you needed to do. Maybe I've done something in the wrong order. I'm not entirely sure. It doesn't really matter, to be honest. His items are cool. It just tells you about how he's, uh... A man with a big pointy head, basically. He has a great time with it. Oh, bloody hell. Yeah, the area is also a little bit Dark Souls terrain where, like, sometimes you can't really run up it, but that's fine. Amazing pyromancy scroll ahead. Is it around the corner? Ooh, Acid Surge. So, this is the other half. We got, like, Toxic Surge or something from our boy in blue. Anyway, Acid Surge. Pyromancy foreign to the Great Swamp. Emit acid which corrodes weapons and armor. So this is not from the Great Swamp, where most of Pyromancy is from. This is something completely different. Not all Pyromancy originates in the Great Swamp. One hears rumors of an unknown Pyromancers inhabiting various lands. And this wet spell is the work of one such outlander. So obviously because it's a Pyromancy, anyone can use it. I believe it breaks item durability. I might be wrong. Yeah, I might be wrong about that, but I think that one breaks item durability. Doesn't do that much unless they're using a crystal weapon, in which case it's amazing. But uh, it's just a cool item in general. I do not remember how you get his uh, set though, so forgive me about that. Try stabbing in Berg. Yeah. There's a lot of stabbing going on here in a second. Just allow us to do the old swing. I would like to get one more level of endurance before I leave this area. Oof. Ouch. Their bones. So much fun to do, holy shit. Maybe they, like, suck you into them or something. I don't know, I could swear they had, like, a spooky attack that they do sometimes. Do you mind? Oh, they actually have more HP than I thought. Yeah, we should probably try get a couple of chunks and level this thing up to the max, but it doesn't really matter too much now. Yeah, another large leather shield. So maybe they actually dropped those quite a lot and I was wrong. Anyway. We need to visit the bottom of the well and get the Lens of Truth, which I believe is over here, maybe? Around the corner? Yeah, here we go. Try Labyrinth. Here. There we go. Alright. This is going to be difficult. There's a lot of, uh... Well, you'll recognise the characters we're about to meet. And by characters, I mean enemies. You want a big shield for this area, by the way. Can I see them with third person? They're going to just show up and they are going to ruin my day. And I'm probably going to die. Hello! There he is. So this is why you want endurance for this area. It's the wheel, boys! It's the wheelers! They're back for wheel. Wait, what? He's still got a bit of HP? No, he hasn't got a bit of HP. He just had a long death animation. So, we're going to equip the Uchi, because it's small. And we're going to hope that we don't meet more than one in an area. So this area is really, really foggy as well. And if you're not careful, you'll go into an area where there's two of them. And they will pierce you, and they will murder you, and it's horrible. But the, the idea is you want to... That is a secret door. Alright. What's on the other end of the secret door? Is this where we're meant to go? Oh shit, hello. <laughs> Yeah, if you're not careful, you don't have enough endurance, you can't just tank through that. We've got just about enough, and then you can just swing at them a couple of times and they'll die. So, yeah, this is the area in the game where you'll learn to hate these wheel skeletons, if you didn't already, from the bottom of the catacombs. Annex Key. Is that the key to the door that we couldn't get earlier? In the wintry painted world, there is a structure resembling an old cathedral, and its annex serves as a type of storehouse. Alright, so we'll go in there and have a little read and see what's through there. Another secret area. Oh, maybe this area is just full of secret doors. This is why you want the Lens of Truth. If you've never played The Legend of Zelda, please go and immediately play it. It's a wonderful game. But, uh, is that all we wanted from down here? I thought there was another ladder up that we wanted to take, but... Maybe not. We'll just grab the ladder up here and go and open up that annex door. I'm pretty sure this is where we want to be anyway. Yep, here we go. Wonderful. Let's go find the old annex, then. There we go, annex key. So, was not locked from the other end. We actually needed an item to unlock that. All right. And there should be some crows up here. If you hear them, they go hoo hoo sometimes. They're wonderful. Uh, what are you? Hello? Weakness. Fire. 
Oh, it's one of these boys. All right. Well, we should be able to deal with him with our bow, I believe, if we don't want to actually get toxic today. They run at you a bit faster, but if you just spam... Oh, R1. I'm missing all my shots. You should be fine before they actually get to you. Holy shit. What a wiggly jaw that man has. Yeah, there's one of them that you can meet, I think, that's completely neutral. He's just really sad and he doesn't want to hurt anyone. Is he up here, maybe? Or was he in the previous area? I actually do not remember. No toxic, no to- Ah, oh, Well, you know what. Amazing miracle scroll ahead. Oh, hello. You're not an amazing miracle scroll, you're a crow. With a big old beak. And you go hoo hoo. So you're a good kind of crow. You're the best kind of crow, actually. The old slice and dice, actually? What are you gonna do there? Just doing an old jump slash. What the hell? Oh! Oh, that's horrible! I didn't want that! I didn't know you could do that. What the hell? I had no idea they could just crush you between their thighs like that. That was terrifying. We also lost quite a few souls there, so we're gonna have to run all the way back, but it shouldn't be too bad. Let's go back up there and grab our souls. We had quite a few that we just lost. And while I don't really mind, I wouldn't mind getting another point of endurance. There we go. Oh, here the crows are. How's it going? Let's just slice angrily and hope we kill them. There's a lot of them here, but... Shouldn't have to worry as long as they don't grab our head and do the pecking attack. That's a very strong bottom on the crow. I didn't know they could do that. Yeah, that's a horrible attack. I don't like that. Let's hope they don't do it again. There we go. Goodbye, crows. Thank you for that, by the way. I'm gonna get bloody demonetized now. Miracle. Vow of Silence. Secret Rite of the Black-Haired Witch Velka. Prevents casting of magic within a fact area. Velka, the goddess of sin, is a rogue deity. But she is versed in both arts both new and old, and is considered to have a great range of influence, even as gods are concerned. So, yeah, the cr I think Velka's thing is like the whole crow and stuff. She's got the crow thing going on with her. So these are meant to resemble Velka, I guess. I don't remember the law. It's something along those lines, but it's very cool. And she likes being quiet, apparently, so... It's terrific. What are you? Mask of Velka. Oh yeah, this is the dude. This is the well, what is it dude set. So if we were to give us the old well, what is it? You'll remember this is the set that this man was wearing. So let's have a little read. Mask of Velka. Mask worn by the pardoners serving Velka, the goddess of sin. The pardoners listen to the confessions of sinners, urging reflection and salvation. Their masks symbolize separation from worldly desires. So they are. The, she's the goddess of sin, and she's not the biggest fan of sin, apparently. Um, so everyone wears nice armor, I guess. I do not quite remember, but it's a very, very cool area. This area all just hints to Velka, which I believe makes a return in Dark Souls 3 with a little bit more of a lore section on it. So do we need to go around here to where the bloaty boy was? This is how we get to the next section, where the... Okay, shot you with an arrow. There's another... Sa yeah, oh, okay, this is where we need to be. Sweet. Do you mind if I just quickly slay you with my R2 before you have any chance to... No toxic, no toxic, no. Thank you. We should be r 2 those guys, apparently. Oh! You know, get another ember here. Is this the... Is this the... Bloody... Ooh... What's the word? Occult. Is this the bloody occult ember? Dark ember. Dark ember. Ember used for weapon ascension. The church long hid the forbidden black ember, and no living blacksmith knows of it. Ascends plus, defi plus five defined weapon to a cult weapon, which can be reinforced to plus five. They were used to hunt the gods and are effective against their followers and kin. So, I think people like to think that, like, Velka is tied in with the occult, maybe. And that, um, it's quite strange because I believe that Andre is the one who can use the occult ember. We'll go have a chat with him later and see what his uh, reaction is to finding it. A bit spooky, I do believe. But yeah, that's what, probably what this little side area was for, was for finding that ember. So, we need to find a way to get under the bridge, I believe. Can we go through here? Oh! <laughs> Fucking Dark Souls, holy shit. Alright then, I quite like that. What is through here? We're about to get, like, mauled by a million enemies. Velka's Rapier! Alright, sweet. I think this is another- this is actually just a straight-up occult weapon, isn't it? A symbolic, powerful thrusting sword used by the pardoner serving Velka, goddess of sin. It is no mere symbol to be sure. The Pardoner is an inhuman swordsman and wields this enchanted blade with special sword techniques. So, yeah, look, 110 Occult. One of the only weapons in the game, maybe the only by default, that has a cult on it. I might be wrong, there might be another one. But, um, really, really cool. If you're having a lot of difficulty with, like, the god enemies, I guess, that's what you want to run against them. Also, I think it's just a cool rapier in general. Alright, then, let's quickly go ourselves another level. Let's give ourselves another endurance level. 
quite far away from the next level, so I'm not too worried about it. But now we're gonna... Yeah, we're really hitting that limit. So, we need to find our way to the Dragon Bum, I believe. Alright, I've, I've gotten a little lost. I don't remember what I'm doing. I could swear you had to, like, kick him or, like, jump attack him or something. Wait, I'm trying to jump attack him. I could swear you just, like... Okay, so... I may have gotten a little lost and just ran around for, like, half an hour not really doing anything. So I'm pretty sure there's, like, a skip you can do here that involves abusing an attack. I don't remember what it is. There's a... I could swear it was, like... It was one of the weird attacks they don't expect you to do. I could swear it was, like, the jump attack or something. But I've completely forgotten how to bloody do it. Maybe I'm meant to just jump off the edge and do it, like this. If we walk carefully on one of these, is it? There's definitely, like, you're meant to kick him or... You're meant to do something. Maybe I'm meant to... Oh, there we go. Jump on him too. <laughs> so, yeah. This, uh... I think it hits, like, the back half of his hitbox or something and causes the legs to stand up. Which is quite funny, but it means you can just run between his legs. Oh, the jump attack is M2 and jump. Alright, alright. So, this lets you just jump down, straight up. And take shitloads of damage and there should be like a knight. Maybe on the other end? I don't quite remember. Yeah, that's on the other side of the door. I think maybe you need another key from the wild to open that door or something, or... I don't quite remember, but anyway. We should just be able to run, no issue, towards the end of the level. Where we will meet our favourite friend. She is a wonderful lady. So I hope you will all keep your manners. It is our waifu, crossbreed Priscilla. She's got a very nice, waggy, fluffy tail. And like every Japanese developer, they didn't skimp, they didn't gimp out on putting a lot of detail into her feet. Because I think Miyazaki is a, has a foot fetish. But that's wonderful. Anyway, how's it going, Priscilla? Who art thou? One of us thou art not. If thou hast misstepped into this world, plunge down from the plank, and hurry home. If thou seekest I, thine desires shall be requited not. So basically she's saying, if you want to leave the painted world, you can just run off of that plank there. And you can. You can just run off the plank. You can have a great time. Try left. Get the Xanthorus set. Oh, this is where the Xanthorus set is. So, this is where the pointy-hatted boy was. Xanthorus crown. A mysterious item once worn by the Xanthorus King Jeremiah, the legendary exile. No one knows where it came from. The crown bears high-quality cloth, which is quite soft to the touch, but its bright yellow colour strings the eye, and is clearly far too big. <laughs> I think this might also be a Demon Souls reference, but you can quite literally just have a giant donger for a head. It is amazing. It's probably my favourite hat in the game. So, you know, let's just have a little, a little picture here and have a little dive off the edge. And that's it. The Painted World. Or, it would be, because... We're actually not just going to leave it straight there. You didn't think we were just going to do that, were you? Of course we were not just going to leave it there. Obviously. Thou must return it whence thou came. This land is peaceful. Its inhabitants kind, but thou dost not belong. I beg of thee. Plunge down from the plank and hurry home. So yeah, they were putting enough effort into like model her feet perfectly with individual toes, but they didn't bother making it so her mouth moves. So yeah, we're obviously not just going to leave it straight there, are we? We're after a much better prize. A much more adorable prize. That's right, we're going to be grabbing ourselves a little bandit's knife here, and just removing and taking a little piece back of the painted world with us. What we wanted in the first place anyway. Hurry. Why dost thee hurry toward thine death? Yeah, so this boss goes completely invisible, but it has a really cool gimmick where you can see her footprints in the snow. Because the developers of this game have a humongous foot fetish. And, like, she's right here. You can kind of see her feet. She does a lot of damage, actually, if you're not careful. I should probably re-equip the Great Scythe. What you're meant to do is you're meant to try and chop off her tail, which is quite difficult to do. Oh! Holy shit, she does a lot of damage, yeah. She also causes a lot of bleed. But if you just stand here, you should be fine. Maybe not. Maybe she goes completely through your way. Oh god, yeah, she's using the bloody life. She's using the life scythe. 
That's the scythe. The scythe we have is not the life scythe. She's, we're using the regular scythe. So what we should really be using is that shield that basically prevents bleed. Just equip that. Look at all those dispensers just suddenly pop straight up. Very, very cool shield. But I also believe you can use throwing daggers to show her where she is. Because she's invisible, obviously, but like her hitbox isn't. So if I run around and try to equip a throwing knife... Where's the footprints? There she is. Oh, that's not it. She should be... there? Maybe not. Maybe I missed. I've only got a couple of goes at this, but this is this is quite a cool effect you can do. If we can actually get it to stick to her. Where are you? There you are. Let's try it again. Aim a little higher, maybe. Nope, that's not it. Not at all where I meant to aim. Alright, where's the feet? Oh, we got it, look. You can actually see the knife floating inside of her body. Quite cool. Makes cutting off the tail a little bit easier, because you can run around in a circle. And go like... This, maybe? Maybe not. Let's back out quickly. Yeah, and it will, but also because it is a... Because it is a throwing knife, it will just disappear straight up. Oh, don't do that, please. I want to stay on the snow, if possible, so I can actually see where she is. And give us a little, a little go. It's quite difficult to get the tail. You normally do want to get, like... Maybe I should have done it with a strong attack. I thought you meant to use, like, a weak attack, typically, but maybe not. Oh, we can't do Yeah, it's quite difficult also to get the tail without a bloody seeing her, isn't it? I also have no idea where she is. You have to be quite careful, because if you don't pay too much attention, her scythe does do a shitload of fucking damage. At least if you let the bleed build up. But the shield, if you haven't, like, specced into blood resistance, the shield they give you earlier is actually, like, really good. And also you can't see HP, obviously. But I wouldn't like, if possible, to finish the battle at some point in the future. I don't know how much HP she's got, but it can't be that much, right? Where are you, Priscilla? There you are. Maybe not. Oh, no, I got her. I can get her with bleed as well. So we're both using, like, bleed weapons with the scythe and the scythe. I believe her scythe... If she misses with it, she takes own, her own damage. At least that's what happens if you equip it. I wouldn't mind seeing her, though. Where are you? There you are. Swing your weapon, please. She's over there. Okay. No, nope, maybe not, maybe not. Back out, back out, back out. I didn't realise this boss fight was going to go on for so long. Holy shit. I actually thought she had like almost no HP and it was really easy to kill her if you're not careful. Where are you? There you are. Oh. There you still are, I guess. Oh shit, we're about to take a shitload of bleed if we're not careful. I completely forgot. Bleed in this game is not just a small degradation. It just suddenly takes all your HP, doesn't it? So let's just give it, like, a second. If we've got, like, another... We've got, like, a red moss lying around somewhere, we can probably grab that. Red moss. There we go. No bleed build-up, please. There she is. I actually have a lot of difficulty finding out where she is. I thought it was really easy. You just kind of aim for the middle of where feet are, but I guess that's not the case. She's right here. Oh, there we go. We got her. Sorry, Priscilla. Um, Priscilla. Yeah, she dropped her soul. Quite difficult to chop off her tail, but if you do, you get a different... You get her weapon, I believe. Or you don't get her weapon. You get um, another occult Velka thing, like a, like a dagger or something, I think. Anyway, she drops her soul. Soul of Priscilla. Priscilla the crossbreed, trapped within the painted world of Ariamis. Special beings of special souls. Use the soul of this crossbreed bastard child, an antithesis to all life, to acquire a huge amount of souls, or to create a unique weapon. What's like Gwendolyn from before? Gwyn's last born, by the way. Gwyn's last born, not Gwyn's first born. So, what does this mean? What does it mean that she's the antithesis to all life? Why is she locked away? What is she a crossbreed of? Well, the kind of brief rundown is, people think that um, Seath, the dragon, mated with like a human or something, Hence why she's got dragon scales all over her body, and she's kind of got these weird abilities going on. She's a crossbreed, we think, between dragons and people, or something along those lines. Not sure who the other person is. Maybe it's Guinevere? We don't know. Anyway, antithesis to all life is that in her weapon, which is a life drain scythe or something along those lines, basically, 
that scythe is an occult weapon. You're not meant to have it. It's, like, it's against the gods kind of thing. And it ha causes bleed. So the whole point is that, like, I believe if you use it, you can siphon life off other people or something. Like, if you attack someone with it, you get their HP back like a vampire. Which is quite cool. But basically the idea is, we think she was locked away in this world. Possibly by Seath. Possibly her father. And she was basically just kept here safe in a peaceful world where the inhabitants are apparently peaceful and kind. So far everyone's just stabbed us. So that wasn't, you know, I'm not sure I believe her on that end. But anyway, yeah. People love that enemy. She thinks she's a great. A lot of people will come through here and not actually bother fighting her because she's so nice. I normally don't bother fighting her. You get her soul to make the life drain scythe, but not normally what I want. It's quite nice to keep her alive. She's got a wonderful fluffy tail and everyone loves that. But anyway, I believe that will mean that we are genuinely going to fall off the cliff this time. I believe that will end the video there for today. Today we explored the painted world of Ariamis. We destroyed Anor Londo for some reason. We just decided we're not a big fan of that. So we also killed Gwyn Gwendolyn and Guinevere. We killed a lot of people today. But you know what? It was all worth it because we got this silly hat out of it. Anyway, that'll be the end of the second to last episode. We have explored most of the game. We've explored most of the secret areas. And we have done what I believe is a good understanding of the game for a series. So, I will join you next time for the final episode of Dark Souls, almost a year after it started. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.